we'll now, now talk about standard two, integrity of capital markets. Standard 2A is material, has to do with material non-public information. Members and candidates in possession of non-public information that could affect an investment's value must not act or cause someone else to act on the information. Extremely important standard and this concept of material non-public information must be understood very well. What does material information mean? The, the meaning of material is actually in the standard. Material information is any information that could affect an investment's value. If, for example, you know that the earnings per share that is expected for a given share is, let's say, 0 0.32 cents per share. Now, you are close to the CEO of the company and you know that in the announcement tomorrow, it will be declared that the earnings per share are 0 0.38 cents. This information will clearly have an impact on the stock price and hence can be considered material. So again, material information is any information that could affect an investment's value. Now, if the information that you have is going to potentially have a, has an ambiguous effect on the price, so the information could either cause the price to go up or the price to go down, then that information is not going to be considered material. What about non-public? So non-public information is any information that, as the term implies, is not known to the public. So again, the example that I just gave, if you are close to the CEO, and you know that this earnings per share will be 0 0.38 cents, cents, then that is non-public. Why is it non-public? Because the information has not been made public yet. What if this information is given to analysts, but has not been disseminated to the, but not to the public? So is this non-public and the answer is that this also is considered non-public only when an announcement is made so that anybody in the public would have access to that information will we classify this information as non-public information what is the critical element here the critical element here obviously is that if you as an investor have access to this non-public information, it's important that you do not do any trades. And it is just as important that you do not cause or encourage someone else to act on the information. It would, from a legal perspective, it might be very hard to, uh, very hard to maybe track you down, but, but, as far as the CFA Code of Ethics is concerned, this is simply not allowed. And you can understand the logic of this, this rule by recognizing that clearly if, if you are in a market and if you recognize that there are people in this market who are trading based on non-public information. So, so if this guy is trading based on non-public information and you know it, so would other people want to trade with this person? The answer is no. And what will that do to the overall financial market? The, if the integrity, if, if, if it is known that people are trading with non material non-public information, or even if it is suspected that people are trading based on non-public information, then others will not want to trade with them. And this not only hurts the individuals concerned, it hurts the overall financial markets and capital markets. And that is why this standard is so important.
in the context of material non public information it is important to understand what's called the mosaic theory and this is quite testable from an exam perspective what is what is a mosaic first of all a mosaic actually is you can think of mosaic as a as a patchwork where you might put together patches of information or patches of different items to create a a bigger picture now according to the mosaic theory it is okay for analysts to put together non material so analysts can put together non material non public information along with material public information so you can put together non material non public information with material public information to come up with a investment story so you can come up with a analysis that's based on on these two and your investment your analysis might conclude that a certain stock is a a buy and this is perfectly okay this is called the mosaic theory where basically you are putting together different pieces of information as long as each one of these pieces of information is either non material non public or material public information i'll give you a small example of this let us say that you are an analyst in the textile industry and you believe that large company a has a lot of synergy with small company b and it would make a lot of sense for company a to acquire company b but this information is not in the as in this is your analysis now you go for lunch somewhere and you notice that the ceo of company a and ceo of company b are having lunch together so this information can be considered non material non public the fact that these two guys are eating lunch and obviously all the financial data and the strategic direction that has been made public by a and b could be considered material public information so you put these pieces of information together and conclude that if a merger happens shares price of b will go up considerably and hence you indicate uh, in your analysis report you indicate a buy recommendation for stock b so effectively what we have what you have done is utilized the mosaic theory where you have taken material public information combined with non material non public information and completed your analysis so understanding the mosaic theory is important what are some recommended procedures to deal with material non public information you have seen some of this before one important thing that can happen is information firewalls so what's a, a firewall this is where different departments in a organization so let's say in the investment banking department there is material non public information this information should in no way the brokerage research department so there should be a heavy firewall in terms of uh, so information should not be allowed to go back and forth between these two departments how is this managed it could be by having separate computer systems maybe separate locations the exact mechanics we don't need to get into but the concept is that information should not be allowed to flow between these two departments so that's one possible procedure another would be to use restricted lists and we have talked about this also where if you recognize that at your abc brokerage there is non public information related to company 1 company 2 and company 
then these three companies are put on a restricted list, which means that research reports are only going to list facts and are not going to make recommendations. And also, the your organization will not make any proprietary trades, which means ABC company will not buy or sell shares of these companies for its own account. Obviously, if a customer send, puts in an order that they want to buy shares in company one and the customer isn't doing the analysis themselves, then it's all right. But proprietary trading, which means buying or selling for ABC's account, would not be right. Another possible procedure would be to review employee trades. So, so if you know that your organization has proprietary information about one, two, three, then management needs to review employee trades very carefully to ensure that employees of the company or their relatives are not trading in these securities for which the organization has proprietary information. Now let's talk about standard 2B, market manipulation. Members and candidates must not engage in practices that distort prices or artificially inflate trading volume with intent to mislead market participants. Again, very important. If you, uh, so let's just take this one at a time. So what are the sort of practices that might distort prices or what are the practices that might artificially inflate trading volume? Let's take this one first. As you might already know, if a given stock, so let's say stock company stock A is, let's say it is thinly traded. This means, as you will find out later in the course, that the liquidity of the stock is low. When the liquidity is low, all else equal, the price of a stock is low compared to other stocks with similar financials. If you, if your organization, let's say, tries to artifi artificially inflate trading volume where one group within your organization is selling, and the other group is is buying and what this creates an impression is that the transaction volume is up so in the newspaper financial press the next day it might seem that transaction volume has gone up and it might seem that the liquidity position has improved and hence people might be willing to pay more for the stock but clearly this increase in liquidity is purely because of the two departments in the same company buying and selling and the increase in price is not justified. So this is an example of artificially increasing trading volume which is not allowed per the CFA standard 2B. And clearly through this artificially inflating the trading volume what this company has also done is distorted prices, which again is not correct. And that is the main point related to market manipulation. Uh, again, I would advise you to go to the curriculum and read standard two in a lot of detail.